Well, hello friends, Sniz here, and today we are back in another episode of the solo progression that I am struggling to uh, force myself to catch up to where I currently am, which I really want to do, it's just going to take a bit. Uh, that's what happens when you decide to slack off instead of staying diligent, so. Uh, what school didn't teach me, uh, Maple Story is attempting to teach me, and it's not looking great either. Anyways, uh, we are doing the Commercy Prequest, slash quest, slash, you know, you know, unlocking Commercy Voyages. Uh, Commercy is more of an end game activity or daily to do, as it, as besides the tattoo and the eyeglass or monocle, uh, which are two items, your face accessory and eye accessory, the other drops are best in slot, but under specific circumstances and only while certain parts are worn or certain parts are worn together. So what I'm trying to say is Commercy is confusing and I'm going to have to link a lot of uh, information down. I believe Meta Mashup did a brilliant guide on transposing. I believe there's more information that uh, Zero by Divide did himself. There's information if you look for it, but basically we're going to be going over shortly over Sweetwater items and then what their uses are. So, Sweetwater items, uh, your first encounter with them, well, most likely will be by talking to the merchant within the trade unit union building. So, basically, as you enter, you'll have the maestra, uh, who oversees your solo voyages and also moves you to the PQ area, which we'll get to later. But on the far right of the, of the inside of the building, there is a merchant, and he sells Sweetwater earrings, tattoo, monocle, pendant, and I believe that's it. Um, really, the only two that you need to worry about are the monocle and the tattoo. The reason they are important is because they're they're best in slot. Uh, well, they're best in slot, quote unquote. There is technically the availability of Damien, hard Damien's eye patch, and hard Lucid's. Uh, other thing I don't remember the exact term for it uh, it's it's something with lucid and it's an eye accessory or no it's a face accessory uh, either way those are technically the two best in slot face and eye accessory but they are not going to be seen anytime soon by legit parties uh, we still have only seen we haven't even seen a, a hard Damien uh, eye patch yet so you know that's another story but Besides that, the Sweetwater Tattoo and the Sweetwater Monocle will be your best in slot. So they'll be best in slot so much that you will have another pair for drop gear, as in you'll have two monocles and two tattoos. Uh, we'll get into the uses of drop gear much later, but I figured I'd mention it now, that it's worth buying a, a pair of each. So you may be wondering what's so great and special about these equips. Well, the thing is, they're in a new potential tier. Not necessarily tier as in rare, epic, unique, and legendary, but they are in the next set of potential lines. As in, instead of rolling 12, 9, or whatever for stat lines, you'll, or even lower than that, you'll roll 13 and 10 for a prime line and a regular line. Meaning that oh, if you were to roll a 30%, which would be 12, 9, 9 on a 150 item, that same equivalent roll would be 13, 10, 10, which is 33%. And 3% adds up dramatically. So yeah, you're missing out on some weapon attack, but your stat is, that 3% extra possible stat is huge. So the point being is these items are great, not just because, uh, not just because they're, you can buy multiple of them, you can 15 star them and whatnot, but because they're in their level 160, which means they're in a higher potential uh, range. So that's great and all that I mentioned the two easiest of the Sweetwater items to attain, um, but how do you get them is probably your next question. Well, there are two ways to acquire the currency that is used to buy them, which is Denaro. Uh, when you first start, you'll be do doing a tutorial for the Maestra, and at the end of it, you'll have like 10 or so. Uh, you are to do solo voyages, 
and once you unlock the route the the voyage route for Mulung, you can also participate in the party quest. Uh, starting with the solo voyages, you start with four inventory or two inventory slots, which upgrades to four, and eventually six, and a hundred energy, which eventually upgrades to one twenty. Uh, at level ten of this of whatever boat you're at, you can tier up, and this you can tier up twice. So you go from the the fr uh, I don't know what the boat, the basic boat to the I think it's a sail sailboat, and then you go to the dreadnought, which is the highest tier, which comes with 120 percent, 120 energy, and six slots available for you to use. The basics of the voyages is that you'll be spending money to ship uh, ship merchandise, and because you shipped it, you'll receive a a profit when you have successfully finished it. If you DC disconnect, die, fail the voyage. You will be reimbursed, but I believe that only happens once or twice, and the general rule is you don't want it to happen, because if you're out of dinero and have not unlocked the party quest yet, you will not be able to get any more dinero. So, solo voyages are great because they allow you to earn dinero to buy the equips that we previously mentioned. But they also have a chance to drop other Sweetwater items, which are a part of a set, and they are a part of an endgame set. So the Sweetwater set is consists of a hat, suit, a cape, gloves, and boot, I believe. You will be using the cape, hat, gloves, and boot, so four set, and you will use them under specific circumstances. If you're a dual blade, there's also a Sweetwater Katara that you're going to be hunting down, but that's that's another story. We're focusing on what I'm playing, which is the Thunderbreaker, so I need not worry about that. The Sweetwater set is ridiculous. You, re you receive massive, massive boosts to weapon attack and magic attack while using them, and while having like two items from the Sweetwater set equipped or more, uh, just massive uh, weapon attack. It's and to put it in perspective it's so massive to the people who know what superior items are you'll end up transferring transposing not transferring but transposing your tyrant gear onto it because it's just so powerful tyrant gear is a whole nother story and so are superior items along with star force in general but the idea is the sweet water equips are rare very rare and you don't get many chances. You only get a limited amount of chances at it at a drop a day. So that is why people resort to doing the PQ because apparently the PQ has a higher drop chance of the gear and weapons. So people will do that, team up, and they will compromise and say what item they're gonna claim or what run they're gonna take for the drops. And the general synopsis, uh, the general rule or the unspoken rule is if a weapon drops and it is not for your class, wait until everyone has seen it to justify taking it. That's a big one because you don't need to take a weapon that you can't use because you can't transfer it to a mule. Uh, besides that, again, Sweetwater is very rare. I recommend you do your three runs of CPQ every day. I recommend you do your four voyages or however many voyages you can do every day. I recommend to keep this as a daily because when you do eventually make it to the transposing section of tyrants and superior items, you'll need Denaro anyways to attempt transposing. So, that said, I highly recommend that you keep CPQ and solo voyages in mind and keep at them. It, try to at least do your CPQ as that has a higher chance for the drops and takes less time. Either way, I think that's I've spoken long enough for this video. So I'll have to end it here. Bye friends.